Hello, killers and survivors. I'm Andrew, and if you're anything like me, your time in quarantine has been filled with anxiety, abject terror, and non-stop video gaming, all of which got me more than a little obsessed with Dead by Daylight. Since its release in 2016, this asymmetric horror game has seen a steady stream of quality of life updates, new maps, killers, and survivors. And while I'm enjoying every second of stalking my prey as Ghost Facer, locking reverse bear traps on survivors as the pig, I must admit, I feel like the developers are missing on some golden opportunities to add some killers we haven't seen yet. So today, I want to walk through my wish list of killers and their survivor counterparts that I'm dying to see in the game and answer the question, who would make a killing in Dead by Daylight? Let's start with a pint-sized killer near and dear to all of our hearts, Chucky the Killer Doll. Wait, wait, Andrew, are you serious? You stupid <laughs> Come on, Chucky is so tiny, how would he effectively work in Dead by Daylight? And look, I get it. In Dead by Daylight, the killers win by hooking survivors from, well, meat hooks. You hook the survivors enough times and the entity comes down to claim their prize. These vastly different killers do have one thing in common they're all big enough to carry their victims. Whereas Chucky is a mere 29 inches tall. But that doesn't mean he can't be effective. It ain't the size that counts, ass After all, short people have a long history of dominance in first person shooter games, as evidenced by the infamous odd job of GoldenEye fame. We just have to be a little creative. One potential workaround could be Chucky riding on survivors' backs and leading them to traps instead of hooks, as opposed to carrying them outright. These traps could change with every map, like the wormholes in Hawkins or the car crusher at Auto Haven Wreckers. Plus, some of these traps could reference some of Chucky's most famous kills. As for his weapon, here's what I'm thinking. It's gotta be his iconic steak knife, which can be swung 15% faster than other killer's weapons. His active ability, peekaboo, allows him to enter lockers and open chests, to hide and surprise survivors, allowing him to attack and down them instantly upon discovery. As for a survivor, this one's obvious. It's gotta be Andy. A doll Andy Barclay as he appears in Cult of Chucky, to be precise. His knowledge of the killer doll's capabilities and experience with escaping his traps would be essential in avoiding being sacrificed to the entity. As for the map, we're thinking Kent Military Academy from Child's Play 3. Dead by Daylight is missing a scary military industrial complex-esque location, complete with an armory, bunk rooms, training fields, and trash compactors. Oh my god! Stop! I know Chucky is a little unorthodox for the playstyle of Dead by Daylight, but in a game filled with licensed killers, it'd only be natural for him to be included. Plus, who doesn't want to run around and terrorize survivors with beautiful Brad Dorf voice lines and quips? Now it's time to play. And speaking of natural fits, this next killer would be a welcome addition if he didn't already have his own game. Jason Voorhees. The Mask. Elephant in the room. Jason Voorhees and his iconic hockey mask haven't been added to Dead by Daylight because he's already got his own thing going on with Friday the 13th, The Game. The games are pretty similar with the same asymmetric play style, but due to IP and licensing constraints, Jason's game is dead in the water and he probably won't be coming to Dead by Daylight anytime soon. But what if he did though? If we're bringing the hulking terror of Jason to the DVD universe, I think we'd have to bring Jason from one of the later films where he's an all-powerful, waterlogged, kill-proof zombie. I mean, that's just more fun than burlap sack Jason, but that's just me. We can save that for the DLC skins. Now, obviously, Jason is bringing his trusty machete to DVD, and his abilities all revolve around the sheer brick shit houseitude of Mrs. Voorhees' baby boy. <laughs> 
The way he bashes through obstacles and takes and dishes out absolute beatings without really even flinching. See, in Dead by Daylight, when survivors are fleeing a killer, they can push over pallets scattered throughout the map at choke points to either stop the chase momentarily or to psych out killers in an attempt to make an escape, while killers can just go around them or break them permanently. I would build Jason's passive ability around this mechanic. This ability, let's call it Revenant, reveals the nearest survivor for three seconds whenever he smashes a pallet in a rage. If Jason is stunned by a pallet, he automatically breaks it when the stun duration is over. Basically, it makes Jason play like the unstoppable force he is in the movies. It might seem a little OP, but we're gonna add some balance here in the form of Jason's weakness. Mama Voorhees. Jason, mother is talking to you. Some killers can spawn special objectives on the map that survivors can use to cleanse negative effects, like the pig's jigsaw boxes which allow players to escape her reverse bear traps. When Jason is selected as the killer, his mother's iconic blue sweater spawns on the map. Any survivor can pick it up, making them immune to the Revenant reveal passive. There's only one though, so be sure to share the wealth to maximize the stealth. The map is Camp Crystal Lake. Come on, it couldn't be anything else, and you know it. Plus, somehow, DBD is currently lacking a summer camp map, so it'd be a welcome addition. Tommy Jarvis, Jason's most troublesome target, would be entering the realms following Jason. Much like in the Friday the 13th game, Tommy is the perfect person to try and thwart the man-child murderer. You know, I really hope Jason comes out of licensing hell sometime soon. He could really bring a brute force to the game that we seldom see with the other killers, and help legitimize DBD as the premier digital destination for slasher fans. And now that we've covered a couple of iconic killers that were somehow left out of the game, I've got a more unconventional pick next. A slasher from the future. T-1000, the android. At first, I was torn. Do I pick the OG T-800, a remorseless killer from the sci-fi slasher classic Terminator 1? Obviously, I respect the classics, but in terms of gameplay, the liquid metal murderer from T2 offers way more potential. He doesn't need to rob a gun store for his weapon. The T-1000 can just morph, shit, morph his mimetic? Is that how you pronounce that, Moose? M mimetic? Mimetic polyamoid. Poly Jesus. A mimetic polyamoid. What the hell does that mean? Liquid metal. For his weapon, the T-1000 can just morph his mimetic polyalloy into a scythe or a blade with a huge reach and hit radius that should keep survivors scrambling to stay as far away as possible. As an ability, the T-1000's superior shape-shifting offers a new twist on the asymmetric gameplay. Imagine stalking a survivor to absorb their image, changing shape to hide within the rest of the group, then shifting back to attack or sabotage their efforts to escape. If you're saying to yourself, self, that does sure sound like Among Us, well then you're exactly right, friend. Damn, you are right. But seeing as how DBD was one of the early movers in the genre, I'm not gonna cry foul. As for the survivor, clearly, Sarah Connor is the only choice. And through downloadable skins, we could play as big-haired 80s Sarah, grizzled psycho Sarah from T2, and for the masochists out there, Terminator Genesis Amelia Clark Sarah. Fight me. The map could bring a science fiction feel to the game by setting it at the Skynet compound, maybe within the time displacement array, surrounded by the rubble of post-Judgment Day LA. I would love to see that. Last but not least, it wouldn't take much for our final killer to show up in DBD. All we need is a survivor to say his name in a mirror five times. Candy. The Candyman. While most licensed killers in DVD hide behind a mask and an alternate title, the Candyman, as portrayed by Tony Todd, is just too cool to look any other way. Be my victim. The Candyman uses his infamous hook hand to attack survivors and terrorizes his prey through an active ability that places a cluster of bees on parts of the map. You have access to these bees? I may, soon. <laughs> Any survivor who walks past these honey traps are pursued and stung by a swarm of bees, unless they have time to fight them off with skill checks. 
Fail enough skill checks, and the survivor goes into an injured state, allowing the Candyman to pounce with a short but satisfying speed boost. Much like Pam Voorhees' sweater, whenever the Candyman enters a map, five mirrors spawn in random locations. Survivors can use these mirrors to make themselves the object of Candyman's obsession, saying his name five times, allowing him to emerge from the mirror after five seconds. <laughs> With this mechanic, the eerie feeling that the Candyman could be anywhere is carried over from the films while also providing survivors with a way to distract him as he's hunting his bee-infested targets. As for the survivor, there's an all-new Candyman movie coming out in 2021, and I can't think of a better way to bridge the gap between the 90s classic and Nia DaCosta's upcoming reboot than by including Yahya Abdul-Mateen II's character, Anthony McCoy. I cannot wait. I feel really connected to this neighborhood. Cabrini Green. It was a project. The first film takes place in the now defunct Cabrini Green homes in Chicago, and it's the perfect map for DBD, utilizing two floors of an abandoned apartment building in Illinois. It's got everything you need for a good map in this game. Dim stairwells, eerily empty apartments, and not to mention Candyman's lair itself. You could hardly ask for a scarier space for a slasher to do their thing. And there you have it, our wish list for Dead by Daylight. We've been having a blast playing this on our Twitch stream, where some of you suggested killers you wanted to see in the game, which actually gave us the idea for this video. We always appreciate your input, so come by and say hey sometime. We'd love to see you there. Twitch.tv slash nerd. Thanks for watching, everyone. We know it's been a minute since we've uploaded, and we are so sorry. This COVID thing is a real jerk, but we hope to start making some more stuff for you soon because we miss you so much. Anyway, did you like our list? Is there a killer that we should have included? Should we do a part two? Leave a comment, let me know, and have a happy Halloween.